One other gentleman, he's focused in the camera. Our PNN Network, Patriot News Network. Gentleman right here with his camera, Matthew Purdy. Matthew walked across the country from one end of it to the other and uh, to protest big government. Okay, yes, we have a, a, a new statement coming up, flashing in on this new technology. The, the iPhone prompter right here. The iPhone prompter. <laughs> Don't drop it. On Sunday, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich attacked the Medicare plan of the current House Speaker John Boehner and his budget chief, Paul Ryan. Mr. Gingrich said that Boehner-Ryan plan is too big a jump. Mr. Gingrich called it a called it radical change. Like President Obama, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, and Mitt Romney, Mr. Gingrich also favors forcing mandatory health insurance upon upon American citizens. They all quibble about whether states or the federal government should do the imposing, but they would all use the power of government to force Americans to buy a product they may not wish to buy. This is tyranny. But well, we got the wind going on here. Mr. Gingrich, who seems not to mind radical change in his domestic life, is simply wrong about the Boehner Ryan Medicare plan. It is not radical. It's as tame as a pussycat. The Boehner Ryan Med Medicare plan is to fix Medicare and Medicaid sometime way off in the future in the sweet by and by while Obama, Gingrich, Romney, Pelosi, Reid favor the essential tyranny behind Obamacare, forced purchasing of a product. Boehner and Ryan have up to now been content to fiddle while Rome burns with regard to Medicare. Washington is borrowing 40 cents per dollar of federal spending, four billion per day, to bury our children beneath a smothering national debt, yet these wimpy rhinos refuse to hide President Obama's MasterCard. Representative Paul Ryan's so-called courageous budget adds nine trillion to the U.S. debt and doesn't even get financed until 2063. Last year, the House Republican minority joined with the Tea Party to fight furiously against Obamacare, but once in power this year, Boehner's House Republican majority, after a hollow, purely symbolic repeal vote, have adamantly refused to use their genuine power to fix Obamacare, Medicare, Medicaid, and any of the other out-of-control entitlements and abusive Washington spending, which threaten to bankrupt our nation and destroy our currency. Until last week, after our Monday press event at the National Press Club, we started hearing sweet music from the House and Senate Republican leadership. Senate, Pre Senate President Mitch McConnell announced that Senate Republicans are now demanding bipartisan reform of health care entitlements, plus massive cuts in discretionary spending before they even think of raising the debt ceiling. By the end of the week, Speaker Boehner seemed to be agreeing uh, that responsible Republicans should fix Medicare and Medicaid now, not wait until the next millennium, as Mr. Grin Gingrich wants. But if House and S uh, Senate Republicans are finally starting to see that the debt ceiling gives them power to demand a bipartisan fix of health en entitlements now, why would they not also repeal and replace Obamacare, the outrage against our economy and Constitution that the Republicans of 2010 said would not stand. Republicans, especially in the House, they control, hold in their hands a WMD, a weapon of mass discipline. All they need to do is lock arms and say, Mr. President, we're not even going to call a vote on raising the debt ceiling. We won't even think about unhiding your credit card until you have joined us in enacting bipartisan entitlement reform and fixing the Obamacare mess. To wield this awesome weapon of mass discipline, House Republicans don't need to pass anything. They don't need the cooperation of Harry Reid, Senate Democrats, or the President. All they need to do is nothing. Just sit on their hands and refuse any vote to allow more borrowing by raising the debt, the 
the, the national debt ceiling. Make no mistake, we are in the Tea Party are totally against raising the debt ceiling. In fact, the Tea Party plans to score just one vote in the U.S. House the purpose of candidate ceilings. This is what we had mentioned here earlier. And with that, we want to thank you. Get the tar and feather for DC. <laughs> we, we want to thank you, and we'd like to, we'd like to end the, end the uh, conference and allow for questions from the media now. Who wrote that? Uh, the writing of that was a combination of several of us and some other analysts that we're working with uh, in Washington and uh, throughout the United States. And that was essentially the same message we presented at the National Press Club last week. It was a combination of <laughs>